Hello, dear Relux desktop user, and welcome to this webinar. My name is Basil Schlegel. I'm responsible for the support and training department. And next to me sits Robert Heinze. He is the head of the development team. With the latest update of Relux Desktop, some features have been added to our software. In this webinar, we'll go through the entire list of new functionalities, which are also displayed on the start page of Relux Desktop. Subsequently, you will have the opportunity to ask us questions to learn even more about the new functions. And now we, go, we will go directly inside Relux Desktop. And uh, on the first page, you can see a list with all the new features. And we will start from the top and go downwards from one functions, function to the other. So, Robert, we start with the first one, switchable profiles in the print output. Can you tell us a little bit more about this feature? Yes, with pleasure. This is a uh, feature for the printout. So we go straight to the print manager. In the print manager, as you probably know, you have this logo option. You can place uh, your logo, your company logo on all the printouts, including within footer um, and additional information on the, on, the, on the front cover page. And here we have now implemented with this new release this uh, section here below. And in this section, you can switch different logos and footer and header information. So for example, I switch here to our GLDF logo, for example, or some other logos. It's really up to you, sorry, uh, to, uh, to have your logo there. And you can switch quite easily, quite directly between the different logos. And of course, with this button here, edit, you can also change the logo, um, change the size of the logo, footer, header, and so on, directly here uh, on the printout settings. Well, that's great. It's very useful for lighting designer who works for different companies. And next to the title, so next to the short description, there is also a little icon which can be selected. It shows either a picture or directly a tutorial. So, on here we will move to the second one, the Excel Interface for Roads. What should we know about this feature, Robert? So we have implemented an interface uh, for Excel for streets. You can enter your streets, one or many streets, with an Excel interface into Relux Desktop. And I'm going to show you. For this, I need to have uh, open an, an, an Excel template. I will show you in a second. Um, this here is the Excel interface. I just have to, to delete in the Excel interface the, um, the results. This comes later. But you can also see here, the Excel interface can also have results into it. But this is not at the moment. I want to show you the import, uh, the import side. This is uh, at the moment most important, that you can see how to import your streets into Relux. Um, with this Excel template, this Excel template you can find uh, on our, in our knowledge database. This is on our website and, and support section uh, with, uh, with an FAQ uh, and also with um, yeah, hints to our, to our application, some kind of manual also. And here you can download this Excel interface. You don't have to create it by yourself. You can download this Excel interface. And with this interface, we have a table structure with an input part. And in this input part, you can enter uh, multiple roads. The road comes with a luminal row, um, with a road, of course, here in the middle you have the road. You can enter your road um, width and uh, the, 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 the R table classes and so on, and the number of lanes. And uh, most important, of course, the, the, the class uh, of the streets. And if you have, you can enter border areas from both sides, up to three border areas on each side. And also important, you can also enter here in this cell of this Excel sheet the folder, the directory where all the, the LDCs, where all the, the OLMDAT or wall files are located, which you want to treat over all these roads. And yeah, this is the input section. And the output section comes later. Now it's it's empty and clear. And this I will save here. Now I'm going to my Relux for this. And now I just have, I have to close. This was the 
the old project, no problem. But you can open up any Relux desktop, must not be in, in street. You can enter, uh, you can open up any Relux desktop and here you have a new button now. It's called open, open from, not open, open from. This is a new button with the, with the, with the latest release. And with this open from, you open up a new uh, Relux. That's why it doesn't uh, matter from which you come and start this. You open up a new uh, Relux instance, and here you can enter your project information, project number, object, and so on, if you like. And now you have to to uh, to, uh, to select to find uh, the Excel template, which we filled a couple of minutes. Uh, you can also put in here your recard, XML, or ASCII files uh, to to open up to import it in, into Relux. And now quite fast. You have all the streets of your Excel sheet here directly in Redux desktop. And I want to tweet example number three. It's, um, yeah, it's uh, one of the streets we have entered without any border areas. Let's make it a bit simple to show or just one border area. And also all the Luminas comes um, with, uh, with, the, with the Excel import uh, into this project. This means all the, the, the Luminas um, of the folder you have selected. And for example, I want to treat the streets with, an, with a Lumina, uh, for example, with this Lumina. And uh, most of the, of the street Luminas today has a lot of variants. And this Lumina here, for example, comes with a lot of variants and also with a lot of different lamp sets or different lamps uh, or, or Luminous Flux classes, whatever. And you can see this is one product, and this one product has a lot of different optics, different uh, LDCs, cause of different lenses, different, uh, different, yeah, um, um, uh, lovers, whatever, uh, or diffusers, and we have also different kind of, uh, yeah, luminous flux packages, and of course you can you can select it uh, one by one and and go into calculation with it. But uh, now we have uh, created an, an optimization. You can optimize of all these variants and all these lamps in an automized uh, optimization function. And this I want to show you right now. I, I close this down here. I just changed this uh, street uh, lumina arrangement from left to both. This means I, I altered uh, the, the Excel sheet. You can, you can freely adapt, you can freely change everything which you have uh, imported directly into Redux. Um, in addition, if you like, but then you have a different state out of the Excel sheet, don't mind. Uh, and now I go to optimization, and here we can optimize, uh, we can find the best variant, the best um, luminous flux for our streets arrangement out of this of the Lumina. With this button, it's really so easy. We have press one button and it goes in the background, it calculates all the variants, and it identifies me the best variant uh, for this street arrangement I have imported it. So I can also set a dim factor if I like. You can also, now it's also new, you can dim down uh, the, the Lumina to hit exactly the needed value. I don't do this right now here in this case, but here I now have it. Here's also, this is also a new line, a new field uh, here. It's uh, called dimming factor. You can also here dim down the dim factor to the level you need. And uh, as a last step, I do an optimization uh, according to distance. Okay, um, and now I have here green values, and I do now export uh, the street with the Lumina back again with this button here, uh, export report, and I now push this results of this example number three into the original Excel sheet, which I have to close before, because <laughs> it's not possible to enter in an Excel sheet which is open, but no problem. We do it again. And now nice. Excel open up, and now we have, hopefully, the results. Yeah, here are the results of the suite. And now we have an overview of all the suites with all the results for the Optima Lumina. Here we found uh, the Lumina, and yeah, mm -hmm. with all the things we need. Okay, thank you very much. So important uh, to mention is that this uh, template of the Excel file can be found on our website on, uh, or in, in our knowledge uh, database. Um, there is also a tutorial will, which will show you uh, exactly where you can find this file and how to uh, modify it. 
So once you have modified the Excel file, you can create different streets, add them to Relux Desktop, then they will be automatically built inside Relux Desktop, so you don't have to do that again. And then after uh, calculation, calculating your scene, you can export the result again back to Excel. So another tool is uh, Modern Excel Output, or it, what does it mean exactly? Yeah, we also uh, changed our our complete Excel um, output, our complete Excel internal tool. We have a, a, a different internal um, method to create Excel sheets now, which is a lot better, um, much better than before. Um, the structure is the same. I just show you uh, how it looks, how it feels. I have here another project with a couple of rooms, uh, just in order to have a bit more in the export, as uh, just with this one lonely room. We just go here to the export section and we have here um, still, it's the same like in the version before, you can export in Excel uh, the part list, but also results. You can also export uh, directly from the from the result overview uh, with a right click uh, into an Excel sheet. And this complete Excel um, output is, 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 is created new internally. Uh, we have put um, some cosmetics to it, so it looks now a bit yeah, more clean with a, with, a, with a bit of color into it, but the structure, uh, if you use this um, 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 part list before, if you have this bill of material used before in other applications, you have still the same arrangement, you have still the same uh, fields, the same structure, so there's no hassle, um, it it's works with the same tools, but now we have just a bit of more color, a bit more um, design elements uh, added to it, and you have the same structure, you have uh, in, in the cheats you found here the single rooms, with the Lumina positions, with Lumina um, arrangements in, in terms of rotation, uh, and also, of course, with the name and uh, uh, numbers of the Luminars. And here, the first sheet is just a summation of all the Luminars um, in, um, of, of the complete project with the amount um, as, as an overview. That's all. Not okay. so much, but a bit of... Well, yeah. that's a redesign of the Excel output. Uh, very nice. And we go immediately uh, to the next feature, yeah. which is on the list. Uh, it's called Easy Locks for Grid Sealing. So I guess we will find this tool in Easy, Look, it's a Easy Locks itself, right? Yeah, right. Also, uh, fast to show. Uh, here I can use the project I have opened up uh, before, and we have here in room. And this feature of, uh, of Easy Looks is something, uh, if you have an, an, an grid ceiling, um, ah, yes, I want to delete the old one. Um, I fear the, the good old Easy Looks. Easy Looks helps a lot uh, if you have no clue how many luminars you need of a certain type in your room. Here we have an LOR method uh, to calculate uh, roughly how many uh, luminars you need. Works perfect in rectangle rooms. Also in other rooms, but not, not so perfect because uh, the LOR method is uh, limited. But uh, here we have, um, in the past, we have a lot of arrangement uh, methods. You can arrange uh, in, in different ways uh, all the luminars, as you can see. And here we have this button. This is new from, uh, with the new release. And with this button, you can enter uh, a certain ceiling grid distance. This makes perfectly sense if you have a ceiling grid. Uh, in Europe, we have a lot of 600 ceilings or 600 by uh, 1,200, for example. Um, and now it respects uh, this grid and places the lumina exactly according to this grid. This means you have not to correct it to a grid. You can instantly, out of easy looks, go with an with a certain yeah with a certain um, um, grid distance for all the luminars, and this works quite well and quite perfect. Yeah, okay. Also, it's easy to do. Yeah. Sure. Well. So you can see there is a new uh, Luminar arrangement tool inside EasyLux, uh, yeah, which is displayed once again here in this little picture. Okay, so the next one is called LED maintenance factor, and uh, I'm sure this feature we'll find in the Relux uh, calculation manager. Yes, this is one of my favorites um, for, for this version. With this feature you can finally um, have your own maintenance factors on LED, LED luminars. Um, I just show it in the calculation manager, um, It happens here. In the calculation manager, you can, of course, use a classical, uh, this is something like 0 0.8 if you are in Germany, for example. 
if you are in different countries, you maybe have a different um, maintenance factor. Um, but of course, it's, this, is, this is not new, this is an, an, an old feature. You can um, have your own uh, calculated maintenance factor, which makes absolutely sense if you go deeper down into, into maintenance, um, which I can really recommend it uh, for all the lighting designers to go once deeply into the maintenance factor. You can do a lot with maintenance factors in, in your results or in the amount of luminance you need. Uh, here we have uh, an updated of all the standards we uh, we need in order to calculate these maintenance factors. And finally, you have this screen here. With this screen, you can you can uh, calculate your your maintenance factor exactly according to the luminance. And which what, what is new is that we have now LEDs implemented. LEDs was before there, but for LEDs um, you you had to to have your own. Um, lamp luminous uh, flux maintenance factors and your own lamp survival uh, factor uh, to, to enter in. So it was just empty if you go to LED. Uh, of course, for all the uh, conventional luminars, if it's still available, you have uh, also some kind of, of templates behind where you have some kind, some values, depending also on, on other values. Uh, but this is not the case now. We have to go into LEDs. And if we have uh, in, in Relux the, um, the type of LED, the lifetime of LEDs, so this is something which could be come from the manufacturer. I say could. In, in most of the cases, uh, you have to know by yourself as a designer uh, what, is the, what is the lifetime of the LED and what is the L uh, value um, of the LED. So for example, L80, this is something common. If you have an L80 um, LED with, uh, with a lifetime of 50,000 hours, and you use this L80 luminar for 50,000 hours, then you end up with a maintenance, with a uh, luminous flux lamp maintenance factor of 0 0.8, because this is L80. If you go to L85, you end up with L uh, with 0 0.85. So quite simple. And but now comes the magic. If you have an L80 luminar which, which uh, can last for 50,000 hours, and if you just need this luminar for for 25,000 hours which, for example, for an office situation, it's, it's perfect to have just uh, 25,000 hours, you end up with a an, with an, uh, lamp's luminous uh, flux factor of 0 0.9. This means an, an, an increase of the, of the luminous flux by end of the maintenance uh, or close to the next maintenance uh, uh, situation. And here you can do a lot uh, in terms of getting a better maintenance factor and with a better maintenance factors you save uh, the amount of uh, luminars or you have a better um, illumination value in the end. So this makes perfectly sense to, to deal once with this section here. I know not everybody knows this section, but it's worth to, to enter this. Absolutely, because it helps us to really calculate the uh, existing maintenance factor for this scene or even for uh, one for each luminar actually. Um, I'm really excited to present you the next feature. Uh, it, this is my personal favorite. Okay. So this is the furniture library on ReluxNet. Um, as I work in the support, I have many requests regarding uh, new 3D objects. And now we can present you a ReluxNet library uh, in which you can find different 3D objects. And you can download it directly into uh, your project from our website. And then you can save it to use it for many other um, projects. Yeah. This is something we have to show, of course. Um, yeah. You know, uh, if you want to have uh, furniture, so desks, chairs, whatever, you have this old known button here. And this is still the same button. But we have um, entered much, much, much more furniture into it. So we have a lot of more furniture into it, and it was just too much to put it here into Relux Desktop. So we had to um, get out of all the furniture, uh, out of, of the local installation of Relux Desktop. Uh, you have now, you found now all the, the, the furniture, all the 3D objects online on Relux.net. We have um, created a an, an, an third section in Relux.net. The, um, the old ones was luminars, sensors, and now we have also 3D objects. And you can enter this by this button, load from Relux.net. And now Relux.net open up. And here we have at the moment one uh, provider of, of 3D objects. Uh, here we have 3D objects, luminous sensors. We have, oh, sorry, I have to switch to English. Mm -hmm. Now you can understand here, 3D objects. And here you found uh, all the new furnitures, all the new 3D objects, which you can, of course, use for free. 
directly into Relux, but just online. So it means not uh, it's, it's it's complicated or um, yeah uh, or, or only heavy to to load into Relux. It's quite simple like this. I go here, for example, to um, yeah some sports, some recon uh, rec recreational uh, furnitures, and for uh, for example here this table football soccer whatever tabletop um, game. And if you want to have this in your project, you just have to click like on the Luminars on Reluxnet on this button, open up in uh, Relux desktop, and instantly you have it here in Relux desktop. You can place it, and you can work with it like you would it uh, load from, from your local hard drive in the past. It's the same way. And now if you have inter entered it once, if, if, if it loaded once, from Reluxnet, you can store it locally, you can have it in your project, offline of course, and if you are in need of having a lot of uh, furniture offline, of course you can also download from Reluxnet um, this, the objects, these objects locally to your hard drive. You can save it on the hard drive, it's in roll file, it's uh, in, in, in roll file as a Lumina, uh, but just for 3D objects. And uh, you have also in it here, this was from the, from the rehearsal before, you can also use this object again without being um, um, online and place it again in the next room uh, or in the same room or whatever. Of course, you can also delete it uh, quite easily and work and yeah, have fun with it. And as I said, there is a lot of more of uh, furniture now available in our online repository here. And it can still grow. So. Yeah. Uh... If you are, if you still miss some 3D object, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. So uh, contact the support, and then ask us to add. Um, I don't know, just some uh, other boats. 3D <laughs> more boats. <laughs> perhaps we have yeah. not, not enough boats in uh, this library. Yeah, just let us know uh, so we can uh, still add some other uh, objects. Yeah. Um, Back to we looks. Back to Relux, yeah. So, um, again, here, uh, Furniture Library, you can uh, watch the tutorial uh, next to it. So, also to learn a little bit more how to uh, store the project in a second step. Good. The next, po next point is more optimizations in, in the Street tool. Uh, this uh, we have to skip, or we will skip, because we already mentioned it in uh, 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 to, uh, in, a in the road session. We have we had already oh, seen the by the Excel session. function. I've shown this optimization about the, oh, oh, the variance. Yeah. Yes. So we have added more optimizations uh, possibilities in uh, the Relux Street tool, and uh, yeah, we have already been through this. So the next one is cut out for resist luminaires. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about this feature? Yeah, there's also something you have to see. In the past, um, you have uh, in, in really strict ceiling uh, in, in geometrics, uh, in geometry, uh, in, in Relux desktop. This means uh, the ceiling was the ceiling. And if you have a downlight, which has an, an open housing, it was not possible to look into this housing. There was still the ceiling, um, um, which covers uh, the, the, the lumina with, with the housing. I have here to this, this we have changed now. We have now the possibility um, to to have a cutout uh, for the luminars. And if I place here this nice down light, you can see it acts like it should be. Uh, you have now an opening. You can see into the housing, into the down lights, and you have now a really better optical representation of this of this open housing recessed luminars. Uh, this works quite perfectly uh, also in uh, not just on the ceiling, it works also on, on walls, on the floor, everybody, uh, everywhere where you have an, 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 an surface, uh, this will be um, geometry cut out so that you can see directly into this housing um, in the Lumina. Uh, it's just an, an optical feature. The calculation is the same. The calculation values before and after are correct and, 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 uh, and works. Uh, this is just an, an optical, but I have to say, a big uh, an optical step uh, if you work a lot of, uh, with open housing down lights. So uh, this means reset uh, luminaires uh, are now shown in a 3D manner, uh, which is yeah really impressive, uh, I have to say. 
Okay, there is one left, if I'm right. Yes. Yep. So uh, the last one is, so for this version, is uh, direct reflection uh, calculations. Yeah. And this has something to do with the ray tracing calculation. Yes, this is maybe a bit of exotic uh, for, for the most of our users. Uh, I've also prepared a in, in demonstration of it in a second room. It's uh, like this. Um, if you have a an, 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 an direct reflection, if you have a reflection on a mirror, uh, and you, if you have this reflection on a mirror, um, it's, of course, you have in reality, you have here a an, an spot uh, on the floor, uh, of course, you have here a mirror with a direct reflection. In the past, if you have a an, an, uh, situation, and if you do a calculation, you have something like this. I just no, need to open up the... Um, the side of colors, uh, illuminance, and the reference plane, it looks like this. So this is a normal case with uh, our uh, radiosity um, um, main calculation core. Uh, this means uh, you go with a direct reflection um, part, but you're going diffuse. You have not a direct reflection to this side, you have just a diffuse uh, reflection overall to the room. If you are in need of an of a physical correct representation of this direct reflection, you have to go to our second calculation core, which is in red tracing, which is a, which is a, which is a red tracer, and here you have a result like this. I have to show it. Looks like that. This means you have really the uh, the reflection in calculation, not just in, in a visual uh, impression. Of course, you can also do a bit uh, of more physical correct uh, visualizations, but also you have the calculation values. Um, you have also here the right calculation values for this material in a reflection. So this is, as I said, it's a bit of, of, of exotic. If you are, but if you are in need of calculation of calculate uh, reflections of materials, this is now possible with uh, this, this, this. This we have to keep in mind uh, with the red tracer, not with the radiosity tool. With the red tracer, is now possible. So uh, this is an improvement of the ray tracing calculation, mm -hmm. uh, which means doesn't, that now uh, the reflection are more accurate uh, regarding some uh, materials. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we have now been through all the new features. Um, I hope we could a little bit more uh, make it make clear. Uh, what, is, what are the new features and how they uh, can be used. And um, now it's your turn. Uh, what, what do you think? Uh, give us uh, some feedbacks or send us uh, some question we can answer for you. So do you, if you have still some question about the new feature, let us know. Send us the question now in the question gap and uh, we will be glad uh, to answer them. And I guess there are, all, all, are already some uh, questions available. Um, let us start with the answering. So, uh, is Good. there... Here's one. Um, how about diffused glass in radiosity calculation? Yeah, and in radiosity you have uh, always just a diff perfectly diffuse um, behave uh, of the light of all the uh, surfaces. This means uh, if you do radiosity with glass, uh, it looks like a piece of paper. Uh, it's, you cannot uh, look through it. You need to have a red tracing. And with red tracing, glass is glass. You can look through it. There's transmissions uh, of the materials in red tracing. So there is not a question. What do we need to do uh, to allow luminar? Uh, yeah, this is this question. To allow the ceiling cut out in our luminar databases. It works uh, right with the. Uh, it works directly with the with the luminars. It's nothing um, related to to the models. The, um, of course, you need a 3D model of the recessed luminar. But this is in a lot of cases is it the case so that you have an, an 3D modeled um, downlight, for example. And if you place this downlight now, you have an an, an cutout of the ceiling. There's nothing to change uh, in 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 Lumgeo or in other applications. You need just a an, an, an physical correct geometry uh, of the lumina. Nothing more. Nothing to add. Uh, there is another question. Do the windows on the 3D library work with natural light? So I guess daylight, huh? 
Good question. Really good question. <laughs> I can assume that the, the, the windows we have in our 3D library are just 3D objects and um, I, yeah, it will behave like a normal window, um, hopefully. Um, this means the same features. Um, honestly, you have to you have to try it uh, with with, uh, with the with the Lumina how it acts, um, but it's um, yeah it's 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 in furniture. Uh, it's not uh, in in window with in, in separately window uh, window object uh, in Relux, and this is just an 3D object who looks like a Windows, but it's not in Relux Windows a window object. Mm. So this means be careful with calculations um, with this. I assume it should be possible to um, to add a ray tracing material to different parts of this 3D object in order to do the calculation uh, and to have it uh, transparent. This is possible, yeah. But uh, you have to try it and uh, we, we will also do uh, some tests here in, in our offices. Is it possible to place sensors in the ceiling? Mm. Uh, of course, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also now with the with the cutout, you have, can also if you have a recessed, uh, it's, I don't know a sensor, mm -hmm. you have a geometry which is going into the ceiling. So, but if you have something like this, now it looks better than before. Yeah. Uh, uh, what? There's a German one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we, uh, this is something which is not in our topic today. That was more precise question. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Quite, yeah. About the glass, more precise question, precise question. Before the update, you couldn't uh, calculate glass material as a transparent and reflecting material in radiosity calculations. Expect windows. Does it work now uh, realistically like the mirror? Okay, I think it's once again has something to do with uh, yeah, radiosity calculation and um, yeah. uh, ray with, tracing. With, with the red tracer, the calculation of glass uh, should now work uh, much better, much accurately um, as before, but uh, just with glass inside the room uh, with glass outside or if you have a window glass of course the reflection of the glass will be calculated more correctly but um, if you mix up with, with, with daylight and glass uh, it's it's yeah, it's something um, yeah, where, where you have to to yeah we have it's the same uh, topic again glass uh, on the on the outside as an object um, is something where the light from outside of course within within windows object it comes in um, yeah, but this is something which which should work quite well with a red tracer, um, with, uh, with with also with with, 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 uh, with values. So we can also have really calculation values, but just with the red tracer. And just I have to say with the with an horizontal um, measurement direction, it's not possible to calculate uh, verticals with the red tracing right now. Uh, someone is asking us about uh, <coughs> the Excel for for roads. Can you show? A calculation with several LDT, a several, and several results shown in Excel. This is something um, we had, we had less we had not the time to go back into into this Excel sheet, um, but this Excel uh, template just have one um, calculation result, just the optimum calculate uh, the optimum result in one street. This means if you want to have several results uh, on the same street, uh, you have to enter the same streets again and again with different luminars, and then you have it in Excel. It's not possible to have all the results of all the variants, for example, in an Excel sheet. So this is something maybe for, for advanced users, it's, it's, it's possible to have it like this, but for the, for the, for the normal version of Redux desktop, uh, it works like one line, one street, one result, and if you have, want to have more results, you have to copy the same street again and again. One last question, uh, which I think uh, is very uh, is a good one. How to save print uh, the save print header footer variants as a profile name? Um, I think this is possible to show you. Yeah, right this, now. Is, this is a quick one. Um, if we go back here to the to the print, um, yes. 
So we have here, now below this header footer field, and if you have, for example, here, uh, variant number two, you go to edit, and here you can just write down whatever you want, and just click OK. So uh, now we reach the end of our webinar. Thank you for participating in this presentation. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the new features. I hope you uh, think they are very useful and uh, you can use it in the future. And um, I hope to see you the next time. Yeah, goodbye. Thank you.